This is the run through for B3C3P3 Foundation Paper 4. Uh, make sure you've done the first three before you start marking this one. Remember you've got this uh, uh, equations table in the front of your um, exam. You'll always get this. It's particularly important for the physics section where the answer is essentially given to you here if you can just put in the right numbers. But we're going to start with the biology section. So first question. Amy and Sarah are identical twins. Their development began when an egg cell and sperm cell joined to form a zygote. The zygote developed into an embryo made of many cells. After about a week, the embryo split into two twin embryos, and the two embryos grew to become Amy and Sarah. So there's the process. What is it called when an egg cell and a sperm cell join? So that is fertilization, when an egg cell and a sperm cell join. Uh, and the next question it says, put one tick in each row of the table to show which cells are haploid and which are diploid. So, egg cells and sperm cells only have half the number of chromosomes that are needed. They're both haploid, but all the others are diploid. Um, so, if you got them all correct, that's two marks. If you've got three of them correct, then that's one mark. Next question says, what type of cell division happens to the zygote to form the embryo? So, that is uh, mitosis. And when an embryo grows, one of the first organs to form is the heart. What is the job of the heart? So, first mark is for pump, and the second mark is for blood. Hopefully that's a fairly straightforward answer. So, pump, blood, two marks there. The heart cells develop from stem cells by a process called cell differentiation. What is meant by cell differentiation? So, that is where the cells become specialised. So, i.e. I, they're, they're specialised for the job they're supposed to do. Um, so cells become different. You could also put that, uh, would also get your mark. And it says, as they are identical twins, Amy and Sarah look more like each other than non-identical twins. Explain why identical twins look so similar. So they've got two marks here. Um, so one mark for saying that they came from the same egg and, and sperm cells, or the same fertilised egg, or the same embryo. And then the second marks are saying that they are clones, or they have the same DNA, or have the same genes. So one mark saying where they've come from, so the same fertilised egg. Second mark saying they're clones, or have the same DNA. Next question shows a graph. The graph shows the average height growth curves for girls and boys in the USA. It says, read what the students say about the graph. Uh, so the, the John says, the graph shows that girls grow taller than boys. Abby says the graph shows that boys grow taller than girls. And Ahmed says the graph shows there's no difference in the height that girls and boys grow to. And who has made the correct statement? So, first mark is choosing the right person. The right person is Abby. And the reason is that boys grow to around 177 centimetres and girls grow to 164. So there's a difference there. So boys grow to 167, uh, sorry, 177, whereas girls grow to 164. And there's a difference. So one mark for the explanation, one mark for the person. Have the girls and boys stopped growing in height after 20 years? Use the graph to explain your answer. So there's two marks here, one for girls and one for boys. So girls is yes. Um, and you can say that the graph has levelled off or they've stopped growing at around 17 years. So there's one mark, not for the yes, but saying that because it's levelled off at 17 years. Boys is no. Uh, because the graph has not levelled off, or, or it is still rising. So, girls, yes, graph has levelled off. At around 17 years. And boys, no, because the graph is still rising. During growth, different types of protein are made and used. Write down the two types of protein that do different jobs and describe the job of each protein during growth. So, this is worth four marks, which is quite a lot of marks. So, you can say structural proteins for one mark, which build new tissue for the second mark, or you could give an example, such as skin. Uh, you could say hormones for another mark to control growth or during puberty. You could say carrier molecules, um, such as haemoglobin, to transport materials for the, second, for the other mark. And then you could say enzymes or catalysts, for another mark to control chemical reactions. There's eight different marks you could get there, um, but you only need four of them. So structural proteins to build tissue, hormones to control growth, carrier molecules to transport materials, 
or enzymes to control chemical reactions, any, any four of those eight points. This next question is a six mark question. Use the mark scheme you can find on the Google site um, to uh, mark this yourself and ask your teacher if you're unsure that you've marked it correctly. Next question, the feature of the bulldog can cause health problems. The large head means that many bulldogs have to be worn by cesarean operation um, where the mother has to be cut open. The flat face often causes it to have breathing problems. Some people think that the breeding bulldog should be banned because of these health problems. Route about whether breeding bulldogs should be banned or not. In your answer, use information from the question as well as your own knowledge and ideas. Um, so you have to choose whether it should be banned or not, but then you've got to give ideas, and it's the ideas that get you marks. So um, you could put both sides of the argument, and that's probably going to be best to get all the marks. So the reason for banning is that it's cruel for, to animals, um, or that it's unethical or unnatural. And that'll get you a mark, just for saying, for saying for, cruel to animals. Against... There are um, three different points you could make here. So breeders should be able to do as they want, or people like bulldogs, um, or that health problems can be treated, or that um, you could the idea that breeding could be used to get rid of harmful features. So you could you could breed the bulldogs to get rid of the the uh, the big head, and the large head. So one mark for saying it's unnatural or unethical or cruel to animals, and another mark for saying one of those other three things. Now onto the chemistry section, so start off with different structures of carbon, so there's diamond and graphite. So diamond and graphite are made of the same element, or which elements I've kind of given that away, that's carbon. And one property of diamond that is very hard, diamond is used to make cutting tools, write about some other properties of diamond. Um, so there's three marks here. Um, so you can have anything from these. You could have, um, a diamond has a high melting point, it's lustrous or shiny, you could say it's colourless, you could say it uh, is insoluble in water or it doesn't dissolve in water, or you could say it's clear or transparent. So any three of those uh, six points you would, would get you the three marks. So high melting point, lustrous or shiny, colourless, uh, clear or transparent, or it, or it doesn't dissolve in water. Hillary investigates the reaction between magnesium and hydrochloric acid. Magnesium chloride and hydrogen are made. Write the word equation for this reaction. So, first draw your arrow, then write what's reacting together. So that's your magnesium and hydrochloric acid. So write that on the left-hand side of your arrow. And then write what's made on the left on the right-hand side, sorry. So magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. So make sure you put those pluses in, otherwise you won't get the mark. Then it says, look at the diagram. It shows the apparatus she uses. Hillary measures the total volume of gas in the syringe after every 10 seconds. Look at Hillary's results. There they are. Plot these results on the graph and draw the, line, best, draw the best line through the points. The first three points we plotted for you. So the last three points, uh, at 40 was uh, 48, so there, uh, at 30, sorry I missed that one out, was 45, 44, and then at 50 it levelled off at uh, 50, and at 60 it was also 50, and then you just got to draw a line of best fit, which is a smooth curve to all the points, so don't join the dots, you've got to draw a smooth curve, so it's one mark, for getting the points in the right places and one mark drawing a smooth curve. It says, look at the results. The reaction stops after 50 seconds, no more gas is given off. Explain why. So the reason why a reaction would stop um, is because the magnesium or the hydrochloric acid or the reactants have been used up. So you've got to say that one of the reactants or both have been used up. Hillary repeats the experiment, this time she uses lumps of magnesium, and the reaction is slower. Explain using the reacting particle model why the reaction is slower. So, the first thing is that they haven't mentioned that this means that the surface area is smaller. So, that's your first point. So, surface area is smaller. And the second point is saying why that would matter, so there's less collisions. 
or there's less frequent collisions. Magnesium sulfate is used as a fertilizer. It also uses as a medicine. Magnesium sulfate can be made in industry by a batch or a continuous process. Write about the differences between a batch process and a continuous process. So remember, a continuous process um, is a con it works 24-7 and makes large amounts. So continuous process... Uh, makes large amounts, or that mark from the award if you put it happens twenty four seven, and uh, a batch process makes small amounts. Jim makes some magnesium sulfate. This is the method he uses. So first part is um, adding magnesium carbonate to dilute sulfuric acid and he stops it when the mixture stops bubbling. Then, Jim filters the reaction mixture to remove any excess magnesium carbate. Then, he pours the magnesium sulfate solution to a crucible, and then he evaporates half the magnesium sulfate solution and leaves a concentrated solution to cool and grit crystals then made. Uh, then he filters off the crystals, and he dries the crystals magnesium sulfate. And then there's a six-mark question on that about percentage yield and the reasons why the yield is less than 100%. Um, now this one I could we could probably answer together. So to make, work out percentage yield, you do the actual yield, which is 3 grams, divided by the predicted yield times 100. So the percentage yield would be 75%. And it says to calculate the percentage yield, so that you get your first two marks, and then suggest reasons why the yield is less than 100%. So any of these, you could say there's loss in filtering of the solution. You could say that some products may bubble over the side of the beaker. You could say that some solid or solution might be lost in evaporation. You could say there's a loss in transferring solutions. Or you could say that not all the reactants react to make the product. Um, so if you got all of that, then that's six marks. I would check the mark scheme, though, just to see where all the, the different marks are awarded and ask your teacher if you're unsure if you've got all the marks. This question is about energy changes during chemical reactions. Cold packs are used to treat sports injuries. The cold pack reduces the temperature of the injured part of the body. A chemical reaction happens when the cold pack is squeezed. Look at the table. It shows temperature changes for two, four different reactions, A, B, C, and D. And it says which reaction would be the best one for use a cold pack. Um, so just choose one. The best one would be A, because it has the biggest temperature difference and has the lowest final temperature. So A is the best one to use in your cold pack. Amy and Luke investigate four liquid fuels. They burn one gram of each liquid fuel. Look at the diagram, it shows the apertures they use. There it is. Which liquid fuel transfers the least energy? So there you've just got to look at the temperature differences. So the first one is 20 centigrade. Second one is 39 take away 21, which is 18. Next one, 45, take away 22, which is 23. And the last one is 22. So the answer is uh, methylated spirits. Because it's got the lowest temperature change. Uh, and then it asks you to calculate the tran energy transferred by ethanol. Energy tra and then it gives you the, um, the equation there. So all you've got to do is put in the right numbers. The important thing for you to remember is that mass... Is not, is not the mass of the fuel burnt, it is the mass of the water you're heating. So this is going to be 100 times specific heat capacity, which is given to you, 4.2, times the temperature change, um, and for the ethanol, that is 20, which we've worked out here. So that will give you uh, 8,400 joules. Next question, John and Sue investigate the decomposition of copper carbonate. Copper carbonate breaks down to copper oxide and carbon dioxide and write the balance symbol equation. Remember in a previous paper, we looked at what that meant and looked at the number of marks available. So if it's only worth one mark, you just get the marks for drawing it out. So copper carbonate is breaking down. So that's the thing that's reacting, so that's CuCO3. Notice the size of the symbols and the number. You've got to make sure that you match that. You can't draw the number big like this, you won't get the marks. You've got to draw it correctly. And then what's made is CuO plus CO2. There's no marks of balancing because it's already balanced and we know that because it's only worth one mark. Look at the diagram. It shows the apertures they use. They measured the contents of the test tube before and after heating. 
Look at their results. Calculate the mass of carbon dioxide made. Well, the difference in this mass is going to be the mass of the carbon dioxide made. So it's going to be 12.4 take away 8, which is 4.4 grams. And then John and Sue repeat the experiment. This time they use 24.8 grams of copper carbonate. Calculate the mass of carbon dioxide they make this time. So 24.8 is double the mass they used before. So that means they're going to make double the amount of carbon dioxide. So it's going to be 8.8 .8 grams. Then we're on to the physics section. So this question is about choosing the best car to buy. Look at the information about these cars. There they are. Which car has the highest power output? So here's the power output. So just looking for the highest number here. So the highest number is the Jaguar at 375. So either circle or, or um, write it down. And it says this high, high power car does not have the worst fuel consumption. Use the data to, to explain, to suggest and explain a reason why. So if you look across um, that line, you can see that the mass of the car is lower than the, all the others. So the mass is the lowest, and that means that less force is needed to accelerate it. Uh, and which car has the best fuel consumption? So here's your fuel consumption. Remember, the best one is the lowest one. You don't want to use much... Uh... Hold on a second. Sorry, I'm wrong there. The best one is the highest one because it's a slightly different uh, wording. So you've got fuel consumption in kilometres per litre. So whichever one travels the furthest distance on only a litre of fuel is the best one. So that's the Volvo. So I've got 29 there. So Volvo's your answer there. And then reason, because it's got the lowest mass uh, and it has the smallest engine capacity. So those are your two reasons there. So it's three marks. One for choosing the volume, Volvo, sorry. And one for saying that it has the um, lowest mass and the smallest engine capacity. So, next question. Jenny's family des uh, cannot decide which car to buy. So there are three different opinions here. So Grandma says, I want a car that rarely breaks down and will always start first time. The Dad says he just wants the blue car. And the Mum says, I want a car that has effective brakes and short braking distances compared to other cars. It says, some parts of what they are saying can be supported by scientific evidence. Other parts are only views, claims, or opinions whose statement can be completely supported by scientific evidence. Now, Grandma's one that says that a car rarely breaks down, will always start the first time, is not really scientific. Blue is not scientific, but you can. A scientific one is the one you can test. So you can test the braking distances compared to other cars. So that means that Mum has the one that can be completely supported. And then partly supported is Grandma, because you can check whether cars... Uh, can start first time, but you can't really check that um, they don't break down very much. Obviously, the, the, the colour being which one is the best colour is not scientific at all. And scientists test new cars using crash dummies to see how safe they are. They give each car a safety rating. They share their findings with other scientists. Why do other scientists want to know about the findings of these tests? So that's so that they can develop more tests or improve the tests or carry out further research, or to see if their research agrees, or to check their tests, or check conclusions, uh, or so they compare different data between different cars. Any of those will get you that one mark. Scientists sometimes change these safety ratings some years after the cars have been tested. Suggest reasons. Um, so the reasons are that equipment is more accurate or sensitive, or the idea of that, that so you could say that the cars are being improved or adapted all the time. Um, or you could say that more evidence has come to light, so you could so say real accidents have shown that the safety rating is different. Um, some car safety features absorb energy if the car crashes, write about two of these features. So it says write about them, but actually just wants to, to tell uh, two features that, that do this. So you could have any two of these four, crumple zones, seat belts, airbags, or the, a collapsible steering wheel. I imagine that seat belts, airbags, or crumple zones are the ones that most of you have gone for. So any two of those. This next question is a six mark question, so um, mark it yourself please using the mark scheme that can be found online on the Google site. 
Uh, if you're unsure where to go for that, then please ask your teacher or Mr. Garner. Um, or, and uh, if you're unsure whether you're marking it correctly, then please see your teacher. Next question. Hossian is a weightlifter. His best lift in training is a bar with a mass of 250 kilograms. He does 5,000 5, joules of work on the bar with a mass of 250 kilograms when he lifts it. The gravitational field strength on the earth is 10 newtons per kilogram. Calculate the weight of this 250 kilogram mass and how high Hossian lifts the bar. So, first one, you can calculate the weight. Remember that uh, the weight equals the mass times the gravitational field strength, which is 10. So you've got 2,500 then it tells you the, the work done on the bar, so that's 5,000. So you've got to do a bit of rearranging of the equation for work done here. Remember that work done is force times distance. So here is your force, and your distance is what you're trying to work out, and your, your work done is 5,000 joules. So you're going to do 5,000 divided by the work done to work out the distance, which is 2. So he's lifted it 2 metres. If you've got questions like this, then just check if your answer makes sense. So if you've got like 30 metres or 2,000 metres, that's, that's going to be obviously incorrect because you've got to think about a sensible answer that this would be. So 2 metres is a sensible answer, so you know that you've probably got it right if you get that. If you, got, if you put these the other way around, 2,500 divided by 5,000, that will give you 0 0.5 metres, which isn't generally how tall a person is. If you multiply them together, that will give you a huge number which would be far taller than the person. So always think about whether your answer is going to be is going to make sense or not. And last question: Four friends test drive the same new car. The interest in how economical the car is. Look at the fuel consumptions. Calculate the fuel consumption for Lindsay's test drive. So you've got the fuel used in litres and the distance travelled on test drive. So and you want to work out the fuel consumption in kilometres per litre. So basically it's going to be how the distance divided by the fuel used. So you've got 30 divided by 2.5 and that equals um, 12. If you're unsure what to do, then they've given you the other numbers. So see what you have to do with these numbers in order to get these numbers and then just do the same with those two numbers. And then final question, suggest reasons why Ian and Karen got different fuel consumptions for the same car. So any two of these points, you could say they had the windows open, you could say they had more electrics on, you could say that they were heavier or there was a heavier load, you could say they were doing more acceleration or they were driving faster, or you could say that there was more braking. So any two of those points. Uh, add up your marks, add it to your poster, and hopefully they are increasing as we're going along.